when I go to work, I do have a concept of what I'm going to do, but that's only to get you started, and you must be careful not to hold yourself to a rigid concept, because then the painting can't flow, and the painting has to flow and come from within, and you don't get that right away, but you have to get into the work, and then when you get into the work, you must let it go in the direction it wants to go. Otherwise, it'll be a geometric exercise or a exercise in mathematical lines. And then there'll be no spirit. I'm very grateful for this show in Fresno. I think it's a profound experience. It's an affirmation of a life, an affirmation of a life well spent. In the 60s, starting in 1961, and the opportunity of working in bronze, we were doing these wonderful, goofy things. Well, when I say goofy things, um, it seemed quite normal to me. I took the form, the open form, by using the grapevine from my garden and taking these long tendrils of grapevine, I took them and tightly bound them so that when the next stage came, the bronze would be able to flow from one vine to the next. That was a, a radical thing to try and pour bronze in such thin, linear shapes. My husband and I built a burnout kiln in the backyard, and then he built me a structure, an I-beam structure with a trolley on it, so when the moles came from the kiln, we could run them along the trolley and place them into a trailer so that they went down to the foundry to be poured with the bronze. These were experimental times and extremely exciting. We had to learn by trial and error because according to the rule books, it wasn't possible to do what we were doing. Atmosphere and a sense of place uh, emerges in the paintings. It incorporates memories and unique forms, light, architecture, that I saw in my travels. I came away from my first trip to Rome working at the Academy with yellow paintings. It was the influence of that glowing golden light. I have traveled in the Middle East, traveled across to Uzbekistan. Uh, the influence of the trip really came out and comes out after you're home, after you're working in your studio. And it was in 1979 that I received this Creative Arts Award that was such a thrill for me. It was an invitation to be in Japan for six months. And the influence, I think, will be there forevermore. I used the white stripe through many of the works when I returned from Japan because there is a stripe in the walls of the Japanese temples Originally, I was using threads and string and then tearing up one layer of handmade paper from another. 
first there's a whole sheet laid down. Then I build up these layers, these delicate lines. Then the last layer of paper going down was this indigo sheet. And I tore out this whole center section to reveal the image below. And this is what they were calling the Gen method of the tear-ups. My husband and I bought an old house in Berkeley uh, in 1954, and it became my studio was one of the bedrooms upstairs, and the backyard was my sculpture studio. And then later, uh, many years later, outside of the kitchen door on a tiny concrete patio uh, is where I put the Hollander beater to make the paper pulp. A Hollander beater is a heavy machine. It makes a heavy grinding noise. So outside the kitchen door was just the place for it. Art is not fun and games. Art is a time of intense concentration. One has to make room in your life for the work you really seriously want to accomplish. My mother bought the Mangua of Hokusai. That means it's the original block prints in the set of books. And they were a very strong influence on my career and my, my work. This is an exciting one that I think will be terrific when it gets printed into. This one is almost complete. And that's why I want a very quiet, subtle layering. The mixed media work is a continuation of painting. It just happens that I moved over from doing handmade paper uh, into painting again. In the paper, I was using many layers of paper. In this case, I used many layers of paint to build up the form, to build up the image. I take it to the press and do a layer of monotype. And this pale, translucent base gives another layer of interest. Uh, you can see the wipe. You can see the dots where I have put in an acid to remove the ink so that you get almost a feathery quality. This has to be pushed back, and that's what the ink will do. And so the, the push-pull play will be more in sympathy with each other. You originally have a concept and a structure in your mind, or a form, but I certainly never have a finished painting in my mind. Ah, splendid. Looks like some of the casing's coming off there. Splendid. These paintings from a distance make a very good, strong statement. But then, when you get closer, you find an additional richness that entrances the eye. The line is so important. It has to be loose. It has to be full of vitality. The hand scratching is important, uh, giving a sense of depth and of the artist was there. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That's just what we wanted to do. The unexpected is so exciting.